doing welcome to live stream number 92 today is november 16th 2017 thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join today's live stream today's topic is about ex well i should say importing and exporting in and out of fusion 360 this is a question uh that i got from burn from south i think that's how you pronounce your name burn uh from south africa so Really appreciate that. Uh, my email address, if you're watching the recording, down in the description area, you will find my email address, lars.christiansenandautodesk.com. And uh, you can always email me if there's any specific topics you would like to see we are covering here on the live stream. <sighs> Thank you so much, guys, for, uh, for joining. It's Thursday, almost the end of the week. So, I can see we already got a bunch of people coming in the live stream. Absolutely awesome. Let's jump into Fusion 360. Just break down a little bit about importing and exporting files out of Fusion 360. What is really like the best practices and how does it all kind of like uh, work together here? So, um, inside of Fusion, if you're kind of like just opening up uh, the platform just like by itself here, um, if you go up to the drop down, and I think this is probably where you know you kind of like are looking for properties or settings or something like that you will see that you got a, a couple of different options we got one that is called new design from file and you got one that is called export now if we click new design from file dialog box opens up and uh, you will see that you get a couple of different options in here to uh, to import um, into fusion now if i go out of this and I go to the export portion, uh, you will see that when we look at the types, they're kind of like the same. Um, and primarily, in, you have in here, you have IGES, SAP, SMNT, and STEP files in here. Now, this workspace is really kind of uh, planned on if you're working offline on Fusion 360. You can, you know, normally when you file Fusion, if you're fairly new to this program, uh, you're connected to the cloud. That's where your data, well, your data is stored in the cloud and locally on your computer. But this drop down with the IGES, the step files, set file, and this SMT file is really just meant if you're offline, um, you can export out to these formats. Now, on the live stream, I have talked about some of these formats in the past. I kind of like broke down. Uh, the whole history behind step files and IGES files, but really what they those are are uh, what is called neutral format of 3D files. So each CAD program out there kind of have their own um, you know extension of a file that that they use. But the IGES and the step are meant as like a neutral translator between CAD systems. So that's why those are there. Now. Where should you then, so, so if you are connected to the cloud and you're working, don't really have to use those. Where should you go? Well, what you have is you have the data panel uh, out here that, you know, if you have followed these live streams, you're fairly comfortable uh, with uh, these data panels. And here, what we have an access to, to do right in here is we can upload or import files to our uh, cloud storage facility for you as an individual user from this uh, data panel. So upload is the same as import. Um, and you can click on that and it will tell you that you can select the files that you want to bring in. Now when I select that, uh, you'll see I have a step file here. Um, but when I hit the drop down, you will now see that you get a lot more options of different file types you can, uh, you can bring in. Um, and that is because that these translators are living up on the cloud. What actually kind of is a good advantage for, for us as, as a company, as Autodesk, because it gives us an opportunity to actually keep um, these translators, you know, at the latest and greatest versus uh, if you've ever worked on an older CAD system, then, uh, you know, as soon as you have installed that standalone CAD package on your desktop, it's kind of like, you know, until the next update, you're kind of lost. But these can all be updated live because they live up in the cloud. Um, and what you should bring in here uh, really kind of like depends on what software 
uh, where you are, are coming from. You will see that you can bring in uh, AutoCAD DWGs, for example. Uh, that's an Autodesk uh, format, right? Um, you will also see you can bring in DXFs and all the other, here's the IGES and uh, the STAP, the neutral formats, but also other formats, of course, like Pro Engineer, SOLIDWORKS, and other ones. When you bring these in, they will go into your uh, data data panel in here. And this is kind of like your place to kind of like, you know, store all your different files. You can see here how here are some of the some of the files that we have uh, created in uh, in previous uh, live streams uh, in here. So if I go up here and I click upload, hit select file and I select uh, that IGES file or that step file, sorry, that I have right there, what is that neutral format? I can then select where I want to place it. I'm just going to throw it into our live stream folder. Hit upload, and it's now brought uh, from actually from my desktop right now up to the cloud, uh, where uh, the solvers up there, the translators, will convert this in this I this step file into a format that we then can open up uh, inside of Fusion. So as you can see here, it shows as complete. I can click close. You'll see that my my folder here kind of like updated. We're going to get a preview just in a second, but I can actually go ahead. There we go. <laughs> that was a second. <laughs> I can actually go ahead here and now double click on it. And it has now been brought in. Now it's not a step file anymore. Now it is actually a fusion file. It has been translated in through, uh, through there. Now, some of you guys uh, might just also have seen that you can bring in uh, something like a uh, DXF file through the insert uh, file up here. Uh, and this is also where you can bring in uh, SVG files. Most, mostly use these uh, for kind of like tracing uh, sketch geometry. So let's say you had like a, a sign or something that you had to maybe do, maybe you had to create some kind of a signage that has to be cut on a laser cutter, a water jet or something. You could also use these to bring it in. Now, the, S, the DXF you saw was in the standard uh, upload. So that's the, it's kind of like the same thing it will, it will do. If I go in here and find the DXF file here, that is the same um, as you will see if I go up to the, to the insert up here uh, and click uh, insert DXF. Still a DXF file uh, that you are bringing in. Now, um, how do you share files with people? Like, or how do we export files out? There's a couple of different ways you can do this um, and, um, and, and you should know about. Now, the way that I normally share files with people personally, uh, and some of you guys have sometimes sent me a file, is that I will right click on the file and I will say I want to share a public link. Now, this is not really exporting the file out. Well, it's just, it's a, how should we say this? <laughs> this is the, the, the way cool people export files out. I don't know. Uh, but what you can do when you click, so I got by that by right clicking on the file here. I'm trying to be, be funny. I don't know. Um, and if I say uh, share public link by right clicking, I can click on this little trademark over here, share the latest version with anybody using this public link. Um, and a link gets propagated. Now it's just a, a web link. Um, and I'm going to show you where that link lives in just a second. Um, you will see here that we can choose if people can download that file. So that's exporting. Um, we can also choose if we want them to be able to put, if they have to put some kind of a password in to be able uh, to, um, to download it. So my pin code there. Um, so with that, we can hit copy and if, and this is what, how I share it. So I would write the email to, you know, Paul and I would just be like, here is your file. And I, I'll give him, I'll give him this email or this link here. Uh, so what does Paul get when he gets that, um, that link in the, when he opens up that link? Um, well, he's going to get opened up into a 360. And of course, because I put my password in there, uh, we have to put that in. No, we're never going to save that password. Um, and what Paul gets is actually pretty neat, I think, uh, because what the customer gets is not only does he get this 
uh, viewer right inside. He don't have to download anything. This would also happen if I sent this to my mom. She opens up in her browser and she can see uh, the file. She gets all these different markup tools that are in here. So she can actually, or he can actually go in and start creating, you know, text and comments and stuff like that about, you know, what he thinks of the file. Now, this is, here's my favorite thing uh, about using this thing, uh, this, this approach, is that when you click download, Paul, my mom, or the customer, gets all these different formats that they can, they can download. What means that the customer can actually pick what they want themselves. And the reason that I'm a big fan of this is because, you know, somebody always tells, well, I want IG, uh, IGES files. Some person says they always want STEP files. Um, you know, um, whatever they, they kind of like want, they can pick whatever, whatever they want uh, with, with this way. Now, one of the questions Bernard had in his email was, so if I'm using this approach it, here, um, and, I, and I now go in and say, all right, I want to download this as an as a, a IGES, what happens for the customer side is they get asked to put in an email address because then uh, the download button gets sent to them so they can, they can click on that. Because what we are looking at right now using that link is actually a secure P call into my, uh, my data, right? We're actually looking, um, kind of like inside of, um, of here. Now this, this data, I, again, I access this by right clicking and clicking share public link. Uh, but another way is you can actually go up, up on top here. And if you click up on the name of your project, it will open up, and this is kind of like your hub, it's kind of called. Um, and here is where that file we're looking at here, where it's actually residing right now. So this is kind of like my uh, personal hub where we have all these different uh, live stream files. And I can go in here and we, if I search for it, I don't know, we can probably look up here last updated. Um, we can see here's that file right there. Now, if I, if, so this is in my personal workspace, you will see, I also get a, uh, an export button over here. And to answer Burns question, yes, this is, these drop down here are the same, uh, as the same converters as the customer, Paul or whoever gets over, over here. So when I, when I go in here and I select that I want to say this as an, as an IGES, um, you will see that I instead I don't have to put in my email address, uh, right? But I get to, you know, we because we already know what your email uh, address is. Uh, but you will see that I will now receive in my inbox uh, a, a downloadable link to that. And you will also see that that link will be active for seven days from the time you receive the email and then it's actually... Uh, then it's actually not uh, working uh, any anymore. Um, so that is really, um, you know, the gist of how you will share files. Uh, if you want to download them yourself to send them to a, a customer, you can absolutely go in here and say, I'm going to download it in whatever format, and then you can click the download box and it comes into your, um, you know, your, down, um, your downloads folder. I, but I prefer this one here because I just think it, it just makes sense. Not only the customer gets a chance to look at the file, uh, they can do measurements in here, and then they can choose whatever format they want to download uh, that file in. So that's kind of like, uh, you know, what I think you need to know about the, the import and export uh, inside of Fusion 360. This upload or import uh, button here will let you um, select all these different formats. Um, and then and then if you gotta share a file, I, I like I said, I prefer right clicking, share public link, um, but be aware of that you can also go out, click up on top here and go out on your, um, <clears throat> kind of like your cloud area out here. This is kind of like your hub. And, and if you have not been out here, 
um, playing around out here, I would definitely recommend that you do that. Just, you know, um, you know, five minutes before lunch uh, tomorrow, go in here and look around and just, you know, poke around in here and see what you, what you kind of, what you kind of get, right? When you, when you're clicking on a file, you know, how does it appear in here? Uh, the things you can show up in here where parts are, are used, for example, uh, you can see that. Uh, you can have comments uh, with all the people in here. And then of course, like I said, you can do the markups and uh, you have your download link there. I hope uh, that this was, I hope that this was useful. Um, as always, you uh, do the thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, be honest. Uh, I definitely uh, appreciate that. So yeah, so that's kind of like, you know, the whole thing about uh, import and exporting. Somebody did throw something in the comment area like two minutes before I got on here about STL files. Um, we did a video on that not long ago where we actually brought it in and we made some changes to it. That was the um, Mount Rushmore project, whatever we want to call it. Um, if you are dying for that, go and find that on a live stream. If you can't find it, because we're getting up to 92 live streams, send me an email, man. Lars.Christensen at Autodesk.com. That was about what I was planning on uh, showing today. Hope this is useful. Again, this is just trying to add a little bit more value to uh, your Fusion experience. Email if there's any future topics. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That's about it. Tomorrow, tomorrow is Friday. Friday is CAM. We're going to talk about post processes tomorrow. I'm going to show you how you can get more post processes for free by going out to the Autodesk library, how you can bring them, uh, download them, and get them into Fusion, how they work. Uh, so if you're into CAM, check out tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you're not into CAM, have a great, great weekend. And... Uh, Hope to see you Monday then. All right, guys, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to end the broadcast. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, if you're watching, sitting in the live stream, I'll come in right now and say hi in the chat. Take care, guys.